the part two to this video will be on Joe Kirby's channel. It has been a whole two months since Splatoon 3's announcement, and let's be real, the hype for this game is undeniable. My name is Neon Lights, and today I thought I'd talk about what I would like to see in Splatoon 3, as well as a sort of analysis on the trailer as well. We also have a guest for this video, introducing Joe Kirby. Hello lovely people, and welcome to Not My Channel. Let's start off with the trailer analysis first, and then we'll move on to what I want in the game. Alright, let's begin! So the first thing we know at the moment is that the character is placed in a dry wasteland, which Nintendo has officially announced to be called the Splatland, which is an area that is completely dry with scorching heat and no water in sight. It seems the game will be taking a very dystopian tone, and the town or city is very different compared to Inkopolis. So it makes me wonder, are we gonna get any sort of new stores apart from just like the usual gear? Like, are we gonna have eye color store? Cause that'd be really cool. What do you think Joe Kirby? When I first saw this trailer I was insanely mad. Not only because Splatoon 3 had the audacity to freely exist, but also because I wish we had a more futuristic setting. Chaos won the final fest. What were you expecting? I kind of saw it coming. Never mind. Now, if we talk about character customization, I'd like to quickly um, say, please do watch Vientastic's video on character customization, as he goes into much more detail than what I'll be covering here. In the opening trailer, we see the Inkling character taking off a ruined robe, mask, and shades whilst customization. Not a big detail, but I like the way they execute the transitions between each customization choice. There are 9 skin tones, with 2 of them being new. I'm really happy with having new skin tones because it lets people represent themselves better in game. When it comes to what species you are, it seems that it's not really gender anymore. It's, it's now known as style. So, it really depends on the eyebrows and type of eyes you want. This is also due to the fact that we can now have any hairstyle, regardless of uh, what we pick. Although, I do theorise that Octolinks will still be forced to have Octoling hairstyles and Inkling will still be forced to have Inkling hairstyles. Honestly, this is a great addition and it allows for more unique type of characters and OCs to be created. There'd also be lots of situations when people who are male would like to play as a male character but there's no long hair. So now they can actually do that because the hair isn't gender long anymore and the same goes for the leg wear. So I really cannot wait to see what people come up with. For eye colours, there are now 16 options, with about 4 of them having 3 colours, which is really, really cool. And I cannot wait to uh, see all the options properly, because we only got a glimpse at some of them. Um, the main one being yellow and brown, as well as the plain black pupil, which is cool. We have 9 legwear types, and uh, now you can pick any of them regardless of uh, your uh, character type. Which is once again really good, because uh, now people can truly express what they would like to do with customising their character. Um, that's all I'm talking about for this segment, if you want more, again, watch Vian's videos. When it comes to the weapons we saw in the trailer, it was generally what we used to but with some weapons looking different and in my opinion better. All except for the gal, which had its design completely ruined and this is a sin that cannot be forgiven. I wouldn't say it's that bad, but okay. Nintendo has stated on their Twitter that certain weapon types um, with a similar class, aka as Chokovi mentioned, the gal, they'll have slightly unique looks considering um, it's to make them stand out more from the original counterparts. So 52 gal, it might stay the same, but 96 gal um, is completely different, which is really cool. Uh, Dynamo Roller also looks a bit different uh, from one of the screenshots uh, Nintendo posted on their Twitter, which I think is pretty cool. Same with the Ink Zooka. Uh, Ink Zooka looks completely different. We also see lasers in the middle of the match, which uh, could be the Stingray. Uh, however, there were some weapon types that did not appear in that entire match. These being the uh, brushes, 
doolies, umbrellas. That's not to say they won't return, since they've always came back um, from the first game. But we'll find out what happens. Nintendo does what Nintendo does. It'd be kind of weird though, however, not to have a new weapon class as well as the splat bow, which a lot, and I mean a lot, of people are excited about. Now that the analysis of the trailer is pretty much done, I want to go ahead and explain some things that I would love to see. I would like to see Salmon Run replaced with a completely different mode. I'm pretty sure many other people want this too. We have a little small fry buddy with us, and it'd be kind of weird if Salmon Run was still in the game, because now it seems that Salmon have been accepted into the Inkling and Octoling culture. So, why would we go killing more if we have one by our side? I'd also like to see a lot more depth in the story mode. The story mode is constantly the same thing about battling DJ Octavio and it's kind of weird. It'd be more interesting if we can have a new villain behind this, maybe the true identity of Mr. Grizz, since Salmon Run would no longer be a thing. Think about it. The business is down because Salmon Run no longer exists. Salmon is now with us. Or is it only Splatsville that um, accepts Salmonids into our culture? Maybe Encopolis is still haunting the Salmonids and taking them all out. And maybe there's a mode where we go against CPU characters who are doing Salmon Run, protecting the Salmonids. It'd be an interesting concept since it kind of makes you go back to the root of Salmon but it's at the same time adding something new by making you uh, fight CPU players uh, and stopping them from causing any harm. It'd be really unique. I'd also like to see a mode where you can tag team along with a friend and go through multiple uh, different obstacle courses as well. Since we have the Octo expansion where it's a bunch of challenges, I feel like it'd be interesting to have uh, something similar, but like you go along through the levels with your friends and you each have uh, a set amount of lives. Once you're out of lives, you can't do any more and you got to get as far as you go. The further you go, um, the more prizes you get. As for DLC, I would love to see a completely new species added to the game. I'm not sure what exactly, but people have been like hairlings because of um, like fan projects of like Project Splatoon 3 or stuff like that but I don't really see it in my opinion. As for ranked modes, I have no idea what I'd like to see. Um, I can tolerate all of the modes in Splatoon 2 already, but Clamlets? I don't know. Rainmaker's stale, and people want Rainmaker gone. I can't really think of much more to say, so I'm gonna probably end the video here. Uh, this isn't scripted by the way. Well, it is for the majority, but this part here, it's not. Anyways, thanks for watching. Although I have one thing I'd like to mention before I end this stupidity. People are also saying there should be an April mode, which no, I disagree with. I don't want to get tortured by an <laughs>